You're listening to World of Empowerment Radio. Your station for practical spirituality in a changing world. And here are your hosts, Angel Rose and Ahanu. Okay, you're very welcome. My name is Ahanu. And in place of my beloved Angel Rose, today we have our granddaughter, who's 10 years old, and her name is Grace Rose Maggio. Now, this is a major departure from anything that we've done in the past. As many of you know who've listened and watched us over the years, we would usually interview people who are authors, artists, pioneers of consciousness, and those who are at the cutting edge of exploring the power of the mind and the various things that the mind can do. But today we've decided to explore a little of the power of innocence and what innocence can do. And not only that, but we're very aware of how indigo, crystal and rainbow children are coming into the world en masse and have been for quite some time now. And they're displaying various ranges of abilities that we're continually impressed with. And our granddaughter, Grace Rose Maggio, is typical of that type of amazing insight into things that we have been led to believe different things about. So we're going to talk today about energy and we're going to talk about negative and positive energy and on all of that. And here's the thing. Nothing has been scripted. Nothing has been pre-planned. We haven't set out or formulated any plan about what we're going to talk about today. So this is very much ad hoc and ar arriving from a place of innocence. So let's begin. Grace Rose Maggio, you're very welcome to our studio, our World of Empowerment studio. And we are so looking forward to talking to you today about energy. So can you tell us, first of all, to begin with, just to lay the groundwork, what you think energy is? Well, I honestly think that there's two different kinds of energy. Well, actually, let's say four. Okay. So the first energy is positive energy. The second one is negative. The third one is a kind of like ghost energy, but except kinder. It's the kind ghost energy. And then the third one is evil and possessed from hell energy. Wow. Now, where do you, how did you arrive at that kind of distinction between each one of those energies? Like, how do you know that that is real? Because I have dealt with each one of those. The first energy is the energy you feel. You can't be physically abused by it. Okay. So the first two, by positive and negative, you can't be abused by. But the second ones, which are ghost-like, the ghost positive energy and the negative energy, you can be abused or physically touched by it. Right. Now, many people may be of the opinion that this is not an appropriate subject for a 10-year-old to be talking about. But I have to say that I'm... I'm bringing this forward simply because I'm impressed with the way Grace articulates her understanding of what these different kinds of energies are, to be even to be able to be to distinguish between the different kinds of energies. So let's talk about good energy just for a moment, and then we want to talk about those other energies that you, you mentioned. So good energy, what, what does that feel or look like? Well, I have actually dealt with it. I actually used to live in a haunted house and an old um, lady has passed in it and she was actually a gardener. And at first my parents had no idea about it until they told the landlord and they were shocked because she actually said someone did die there. But like the good energy can physically touch you, like they can do something like this, but they can't like um, physically abuse you by scratching you or like like um, physically knocking you down, throwing something at you. Because the positive energy is more like kind of like a dog, like a nice playmate. Okay. So one day um, I was in my room with my dog, Theo, that recently has passed. And I was in there and I look out the window since our yard is just so beautiful. There's a lot of flowers there. And the next thing you know, nearby, I see, like, a kind of, it's, like, really hard to see it, but it was kind of, like, a grayish figure gardening. And the next thing you know, she looks up to me and she waves at me. And then it was to the point where I ran into the room screaming on top of my lungs. And I told my dad, and at first he did not believe me until he actually told my landlord about it. And it was real. 
So the land, landlord confirmed that what you saw was actually the person yes, who had lived there before. Because she actually knew that that lady has passed. Right, right. And I believe the house was actually handed down to her, and she was very, very old. Right. So that was the amazing part about it, was that I was actually... And then, way before that, I was actually watching like a lot of ghost videos, because um, I was always interested in hell and heaven, because mm-hmm. they're just very intriguing to me and how the souls are trapped but um i think that we should start talking about like how you can tell if the energy is negative or not mm. there's a well, couple before different we ways. go there okay before we go there and we do want to talk about that but let's go back to that experience you had with seeing this gray ghostly figure of the, the lady in the garden do you think that because you were watching movies you know you said you've been watching mm-hmm. ghost movies do you think that so in some way you set that up in your mind do you know what i mean no because at that time i was mostly thinking about the flowers in the backyard and what could i do to help it since some of them were dying right but the part was that the kind of ghost movies i was actually watching was and by the way the movies i was watching was actually episodes and they're called ghost adventures and shout out to ghost adventures if you're actually watching this but they actually experienced real things and i was this close to actually um able to do a house tour with them but the house that I wanted to even inter- interview mm. with them, mm. they had already done it. Okay. Now, I want to ask you about what you felt. You know, you said you ran in the house uh, screaming and you were obviously upset by what you had seen. What did that feel like? Was was that the negative energy that you talked no. about? It was the positive energy because if it was negative, she would obviously have been running towards me or physically abused me in okay. any kind of sort of way. Okay. But the most important part is that if you're sleeping at night, you can obviously feel if it's negative. Because mm. the negative, it would obviously have abused you by now, but right. if it was, um, or physically touched you. But um, if it was positive, it would kind of like leave you alone, but it would like sometimes mm. like just like put your arm around you. But like... Yeah, because sometimes people say that they feel somebody sitting mm-hmm. on their bed, for example. Yes. So they're not doing any harm. They're just present. Yeah, they're they're kind of like um, a guardian that likes to protect the house. Okay. But, like, they can't really help anything. But the part is, is that if they knew that an intruder can come, they can probably actually throw an object against the intruder mm. to actually protect their land. But if it was slowly introduced to it... Yeah. And they know by if someone had energy or not. But, um, so yeah, so they can tell if the person is nice or if it's an intruder. Mm. And that's the coolest part about them. Okay. So if they didn't like, say if they didn't like you as a, as a resident or a tenant or a new owner of the house, would they then throw objects at you, do you think? Well, they would like, so at first they would first give a chance. Okay. And then, like, if they saw you, like, destroy their yard or anything or, like, ruin something, then they would probably start going on to the negative side. But the still of, like, um, have you ever watched a new episode of Once Upon a Time? How, like, like, um, the, well, um, one of the characters, Swan, was actually, um, her heart was, she was viciously evil, but her heart was taken over by good, so it couldn't really do it that much. Same thing with the positive energy of the ghosts. Mm -hmm. Like, they could have a little bit of evil in them, but they don't have enough to actually kill someone or physically abuse them. They have enough to probably throw something to get your attention. Right. That's technically it. But why do you think that you were afraid if this was a benign and harmless lady who you saw in the garden? Why did you feel so afraid? Well, it's actually kind of scary actually noticing it because at first... You're under, like, my mind has to be imagining this, but then the second time you think about it, mm-hmm. well, the first time you're obviously scared to death because you're like, why? Like, why is this here? This this kind of looks like a human, and it kind of does not. Right. So at first, like, you have, like, a little bit of a panic attack, and you kind of run, and it's kind of scary at first, but until you until someone tells you that you're not crazy and it's nice, then you actually get to notice it. Right. But, like, even at the house, I did feel positive energy. And that's the two um, things. So if there's a negative ghost, you feel negative energy. If it's a positive ghost, then... So you're able to distinguish between the positive and the negative energies. Mm -hmm. And this is something, now you wouldn't know this, Grace, but your grandmother and I, Angel Rose and I, we help people to distinguish between energies. We we call it like discrimination. How, how How to tell 
the difference between energy signatures. Now we do this in a whole different area. We don't yeah. necessarily do it in this area that you're talking about, where you're talking about ghosts and negative energies and that kind of thing. But I'm curious though, because in the way we talk about distinguishing different energies, it seems to be, it could be the same or it could be very different. So tell us, how do you distinguish between energies? How, how do you know that one is positive and another is negative? Well, um, first things first, I have to say a little experience that my cousin Angela has had. And um, she has dealt with positive energy, but kind of a little bit of negative energy. Like, if you have a whole entire heart, this part right here is probably a little bit of evil, but the rest is good. <laughs> so her experience is that one time she was laying in bed, and then she felt like a dog brush against her. Okay. At first, she was freaked out, but her roommate was actually sound asleep, so... She kept on screaming, but you know that force when someone runs towards you and you feel like that little wisp of air? Mm -hmm. She felt that right in her face. And, like, she feels energy. She can't see ghosts, but she can feel them and feel the energy. Right. So that's technically how I actually got it, by actually following after her. And since it's kind of in my blood, I can actually feel the energy, but... Oh, because, she... because it's in your family, is that what you yes. mean? Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. So okay. Um, how you tell between negative and positive is that... Um, well, it's fairly hard to tell against it until someone tells you it's either negative or positive, but... So somebody must point it out first, and then, then you're able to recognize it. Is that the way? Or sometimes you might be able to feel it if you have that good of senses. Okay. So the first one is negative, and how you technically feel is that it's kind of warm, and you kind of feel like needles when you go there, or you feel... Or anything's acting weird, like... Like, my cousin Angela's cat was actually acting the strangest of all. Mm. So that's another way that if it's negative, if it's negative, then the cat would go very crazy. Okay. But if it was positive, it would kind of be calm and a little bit crazy, but not that much as negative. Right. But, um, but also negative and, and, and also negative ghosts can't always hurt you because sometimes they're surrounded by something, but... Mm. So, um... So Another way to also tell about it is that, have you ever heard of the crop circles, how like you put water in the middle and you wait overnight and then it sure. has energy? Yes. So um, you technically do the same exact thing, except you put it where you felt the most energy and then overnight and then and then they should actually bring it to someone that can actually tell the water from from the difference and then, that, and then they can also tell from the energy of that too, if it's negative or positive. Wow. Well, I have to say I'm impressed, first of all, that you'd even know about crop circles and so on. And that, that's a <laughs> marvellous inspiration for all of us. But I'm also interested, Grace, about how you can feel, because you, 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 you mentioned the word feel several times, how you can feel these energies, but also see them. Now, do, do you think that you're different from other children? Or Very other people different. Like... Okay. Like, I have told my friends once I've been different, and they're like, no, I know everything exactly like you, and you, like, mm. and I told them, you have never experienced about a ghost, mm -hmm. you've never even seen one, you have never been physically touched by one, because right. if you were, you would have been haunted to come here now, okay. and I said, at first, I was so scared to go to school, because I would always think that the place is haunted, mm. but I exactly told them, you would be shivering by now, you would have been scared to even talk, Right. And you wouldn't even be here. You would probably be talking about ghosts all the time. Mm -hmm. You never do that. You never have been a ghost. I'm different from you and just understand that. Right. So do you think that because of the experience that you've had now, and you've had several of these experiences, do you think that that has strengthened you in some way? So in other yes. words, a, a ghost, even a negative ghost, wouldn't have the same amount of control or power over you. Is that? Do you feel that? Well, when it comes to negative ghosts, it depends on how... Um, strong in this, and I actually want to tell you this story when I've been physically abused and physically touched by one. Right. So it was in the Whaley House, and by the way, that's actually in San Diego, and it's in downtown. Mm -hmm. And it's called Old Town, and if you go to the Whaley House, one time I was just walking, and it was like a little bit of a tour. Actually, and they then, say, don't they, that that is the most haunted house in all of the United States of America. It is. I believe that's one of the claims they make. Well, yeah. also in Kentucky, they said that there's a place called Hell. And it's actually a house of hell because someone made a new Ouija board, did it there, had the spirits come, and that place is still haunted and notified as Hell. Hmm. Now, I'm sorry for cutting across it because you were telling us your experience in uh, the Whaley House in yeah. San Diego. Yeah. Tell us about that. So, um, 
So when I first walked in, my mom and I got a Twick and the, and the ticket lasts till 12 o'clock, which is pretty nice because you can come in and out, in and out. Sure. So when I was walking into the kitchen, all of a sudden I collapsed onto the ground because something seriously like yanked my arm to where I fell onto the ground. As to the point where I, and that's obviously negative energy because, and I obviously have a connection with one of the ghosts there called Violet. So how she died was that at first she tried to kill herself since her parents wouldn't allow her to get married to this man that she loved. Wow. And so at first she tried to um, drown herself, but her dad rescued her before she could take her last breath. And then the second one is that um, the shed isn't there anymore since it was filled with blood and gruesome. But um, so when her father was too busy... um, Somewhere else, she uh, was able to somehow get, steal the key from him and open up the little chest with a pistol gun and a pistol. Wow. So what she did is that she went into the shed and shot herself right in the head. Okay. Or it was either either in the throat. But either way, it had to be something to where she could probably last. But as soon as her father heard the gunshot, then he ran into the shed and... Tried to call 911, but he actually dragged her inside the house. Tried to call 911, but they were there too late. Okay. So I have connection with her. And you were actually experienced um, the figurine of her once when we were obviously goofing around there. And you pretended to, like, like he was faking to, like, he was trying to make me think dead. He would just, like, throw me inside the house. And at that time, we all froze since him and I actually saw Violet walk past and actually turned her head and waved to us, but keep on walking. That's right. She walked right across the hallway, yeah. And it was something that we both saw. so it's, But it's no one else saw. Nobody else saw. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very interested in how that hasn't colored your attitude for life. In other words, it hasn't made you look at life negatively. You know, you, you're a very exuberant, happy young, young lady. Yes. So do you, do you think that... It doesn't have much, that kind of thing. Do you think that kind of thing doesn't have much power? It or, doesn't have that much power to, to obviously mess with my thinking, but after right. being physically abused, I was actually scared to go in any kind of houses. But when you say physically abused now, you mean by this these energies? Yes. Yes, yes. By, by the ghosts. Like, I've been yes. pulled to the ground, and after that, I had several abuse marks. I actually had two... Well, one on my arm, like a handprint, and then two on my chest right here mm. from her. And actually, many people have died in the Whaley house. Like, like they had, like, a big family, and many of them died from um, mm-hmm. not taking medication when they were really sick. But the mm. one thing that actually scares me about my dad going in, since he's a veteran, is that there was um, a person there that was buried, and he was hanged. And then, technically, he haunts the good people, like firemen, policemen. So whenever they walk past, they feel like that they're just being hanged. Oh, gosh. So that's why, and I also felt that too. Like, yeah. I'm kind of like a hero since, like, one time when my friends and I were canoeing, um, he was technically kind of, like, stuck in the riptide, mm. and, like, the water was pushing towards the shore, which, like, there was no other way to get around there besides been being bit by a rattlesnake. Hmm. So um, what I did is that I grabbed the canoe, I went over there, and I technically saved him. And, like, his foot was kind of stuck in the rock, too. So I technically helped him, and I told him to get in the raft, and then I have to swim back. Mm-hmm. So, like, I am technically, like, a hero, and that's what my friends have actually said since I kind of, like, saved their lives in the easy way. But you're right. Um, the negative energy has not actually affected how I act because it's, it's not as strong as I am because right. I have unstoppable energy to change my attitude Unless um, I feel like something's taking over my body. Do you think that all 10-year-olds have the same strength as you have? Now, I know you did mention that other kids your age are not the same in other ways. But do you think that they all, all 10-year-olds have the ability to be able to say no to this kind of negative energy or even utilize the good energy? No, because none of them, like, none of them, like... The worst part is that if you actually have dealt with ghosts, I'm so sorry if I say this because I'm talking about other people here, but um, technically um, they don't technically have the same exact strength as me because I'm really powerful. And I have obviously learned from your wife, which a.k.a. my grandma, has taught me to never say no to anything. 
And I also taught, and I also got that from my aunts, my grandparents. Like, my family has taught me to never say no to anything. So I kind of, like, explain that, that. Explain that for our listeners and our viewers, because that can mean many things. What do you mean, never say no to anything? So, like, what we were talking about, like what Grandma said, never say no to anything, was technically don't give up. You can build okay. up your courage, okay. and that's what kind of made me say no to the negative energy of taking over my body, was that I would always say no. Okay, okay. So, do you mean, though, by when you say never say no to anything, that all of these things exist, they, they are there, so you're not denying that they exist? You're just it, saying no for them to take over your body. You're just saying no that they're not to take over your body. Remember yes, earlier how sense. I said the vow um, in Kentucky mm-hmm. there was a place called Hell House because it was from hell. Mm-hmm. So um, actually also in that place too, um, what else happened was that, um, what's the right word to say this, is that um, technically there was a lot of negative energy there, which you probably have gotten, but... The part is, is that it's a little bit too strong to handle, and probably at the end, it could probably uh, kind of take over your body, but also people there, like, like his, um, this boy's mother and him actually lived there, mm-hmm. and when he was actually in bed, a spirit actually took him and actually hanged him. Oh, dear. And then same with the mother. So, it's technically where those ghosts are a little too strong that they can actually handle a human body completely. Right. Now, I want to ask you about that, and I don't want to dwell too much on the negative side of this, but it's important, and you're giving us very valuable knowledge and very valuable insights into this whole area. When you said earlier on, Grace, and by the way, for our listeners and our viewers, let me remind you uh, that we're speaking with Grace Rose Maggio, who is my granddaughter and the granddaughter of Angel Rose. And we have learned so much from this, this, this innocence of the child, that childlike beauty that is able to come forward from spirit and bring incredible knowledge. And so on. it's happening, of course, to millions and millions and millions of, people, of young children and young people all around the world. And it's an absolutely wonderful thing. But I want to just come back now to focus on when you talked about the physical marks on your body. You know, you mentioned about bruises on your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How how do you think that these kind of negative energies are able to come from that spirit world into the physical world to do us damage? Well, they they actually kind of have that power. But when I meant by handprint on my arm, it was actually it was actually hurting. Like a handprint was always on there. Like, you can tell, like, there's, like, a little bit of, like, dots of abuse marks. But mostly, if something pulls you down or knocks you with something, you're obviously going to get abuse marks from it. Mm. But if something touches you, and some people, that touch actually kind of stays for a while. Right. And also, um, another thing is that um, a normal average negative ghost can about to do a damage of three scratches. Say that again. They're allowed to. They have the kind of power to do three scratch markets of damage. Unless if the house is obviously from hell and it's a hell house, then... Then they can hang the people. Then they can do more than just three scratch marks. But, and I'm not saying this to about people that they're lucky numbers three. I'm just saying this individual, but three is a very unlucky number and so is 13. So, Why is that? Why do you think those Because um, every single time if someone gets fidget, um, physically scratched, it's always three scratch marks. Or such as always on the 13th floor in every single hotel, it's always haunted. So 13 and 3 are kind of like negative numbers to the spiritual world. Oh. Now, what would you say then, because I'm sure you know that in Christianity they talk about the number 3 where you have... Uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, so mm-hmm. so to Christianity, three is a very special and holy number. Yes. So what? But in the real world, like three could be good in many ways, but it's mostly thirteen, which has the um, accents of the number three, in a certain kind of way that um, you can kind of repeat to it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like three is the number of scratch marks. 
But if you haven't seen one episode of Ghost Adventures, they actually, um, throughout the th- thing, 13 or 3 was always the number that always happened. Three words were always said, three scratch marks, and three things always moved at that time. Okay, okay. Do you think that other numbers have other powers, and, and perhaps positive and good good energies attached to them? Well, I know that the number 8, which I know about all the numbers, at least have something. Like, with one power of one number, it can actually repeat to the numbers that has that frequency of that number inside of it. Okay, okay. So, the number 8... If you can actually turn it sideways, it's actually an infinity cross. Mm. But the infinity cross kind of makes it like forever, like you always live forever. Right. But another thing is that it has power to stop the negative energy. But since eight isn't used that much, it's kind of hard because, like, sometimes I always see Christians hold up um, a sign, and you know how um, Jesus was actually hanged by this? Mm hmm. Well, if you actually connect it, there's a line that goes above here, goes down, and um, the stick was like this, and then it would go back to his legs. Okay. So it's actually in a form of an hourglass, but if you curve it, it's actually an eight. Oh, I understand what you're describing, Mm -hmm. yes. So you think that's to do with infinity and living forever? Yes. Which is what the message of Jesus. So that's why um, it's kind of a fence. Like, I know some of you guys have seen the video. um, At first, it's not like this but Mm -hmm. if you add on the bottom it actually makes a um technically it makes something it technically makes the number eight okay but um if you sometimes see other um of jesus being um hanged is that i mean like i'm stapled to the ground um sometimes his legs might be apart and that creates the eight okay Many people, and, and I, I know from my own experience, when I was your age, I was very scared of dying and death because I didn't understand anything about it. I didn't know anything about it. And I witnessed various close members of our family dying. So to me, it had a, a finality around it. Even though f- living in Holy Catholic Ireland, you'd always hear people saying, oh, you know, uh, death is only a transition from one state to another and God takes care of it all and don't worry about it and all of that. But still, it was very scary for me. Why do you think that we live forever? You you did say that, that we live forever. So wh- where are you coming from when you say that? How can you know that? Well, because at least everyone at least gets two chances in life and if they succeed and do well, then they can move on or if they were a murderer by any chance or a psychopath then they can probably go to hell but live forever live forever in hell Mm -hmm. do you mean so um but if you're good then you obviously can have more experiences but you only get two chance so if you mess up one that's fine but if you mess up both then you're done and you go right down to the holy sack but um if you actually um keep on succeeding not everybody goes to heaven Okay. So when you die, you of course go up to heaven for a little bit, and then you come back down as something else. So this is what reincarnation is. You yes. reincarnate as something else. So do you remember being here before in a different body? Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. So I actually, like, remember how earlier I said that I felt like I was in contact with Violet? Yes. Well, I was obviously, because of how strong the connection is, is that sometimes she actually kind of follows me around is that sometimes I might actually think that I'm actually part of her. Because I remember that past life, I exactly remember where the shed is without anyone asking me. Right, right. I remember straight away, and I remember how she was sitting, which no one even knows the fact. I know where she was actually bleeded out. And so it's technically things that people don't actually know, Mm -hmm. unless if they actually read about it, and I haven't read about it in my life. So I technically, if you actually call me, I was actually kind of... um, part of her okay so you remember this as a past life of yours yes do you do you remember any other past lives well when i was first born into the world that like now you probably had one like everybody in the world by now at least has one life so now when they do died mean, this year do, do you mean one past life is that yes. what you mean okay, okay so when they died this year it will be a second one and i know that's kind of said really randomly but that's when finally God, Jesus, and 
So that's when God and Jesus finally decided that everyone should move on this day. And I'm not being um, on like a Christian side or anything, but that's true. And I just want to bring up this conversation because I know, but some people have spoken as the devil. It's not the devil. What is it then? So, so this was actually um, Jesus' son that wasn't born. Jesus' son that wasn't born. He actually, well, um, so this was actually not documented, Okay. But um, I have known from past lives because um, souls kept on telling me this kind of sign. But the devil is not a devil. It's actually Jesus' brother that did not make it, sadly. Oh. So he was so he was so upset in life that he decided that if I don't get to live, then no one else should, and I should make a place called hell. Oh. It's not the devil. It's Jesus' brother that did not make it as a baby. So he was upset for foolishness, and every once in a while, heaven and hell have war. And you can tell it when the sky, like one part of it is dark, and the other side is like a sunset clouds. Mm. So the sunset clouds is obviously heaven, and then the darkness is actually hell. So we experience hell on earth, uh, yes. is the way we say it, hell on earth. And you, you describe that as being, as you said, a dark sky or a light sky. Is there any um, other ways that we would witness he- hell or heaven on earth in this life? Well, in heaven, like you know, like my grandma, honey, passed away when I was a little child. But um, she actually talks to me a lot. Okay. She actually tells me about the wars and sometimes um, I would be crying because I don't want her. Because if at least one heaven um, budges um, to fight, then if... At least a heaven, um, a heaven fighter has at least been slayed about ten times, and they go to hell. So I'm scared for that, but most of them actually make it out without being slayed. So they re, so they go again. So that's the right way to say it. So if they have been slaved, they've been slaved once, but they are still there. Right. Ten times, and then they go on to Jesus's brother. That sadly did not make it to side. I see. I'm fascinated by this because I know when I was your age, I couldn't talk about the kinds of things that you're talking to me about now, okay? Because nobody had the courage to talk about it. Also because it was so against the mainstream religious viewpoint, you know? Mm-hmm. And also we would we would have felt ostracized. In other words, our friends wouldn't talk to us or our friends would think we were crazy and so on. Do you, because of what you believe and what you understand and what you know, do you ever feel ostracized in that way? Do you know um, that your friends think you're crazy and won't play with you? Yes. Oh, you do? Okay. But the lucky part is that um, my neighbors, Mason and Gage and Kiki, which luckily I actually will be telling them to watch this video right now. And if you guys are actually watching this, big shout out to you guys and I love you guys so much. But um, so actually, they don't think I'm crazy. They believe in what I believe in, which is kind of nice because they look up to me. So whatever move I make will affect their future. But that's why I play it safe. And that's also why I believe in ghosts because... And that's also why they believe in ghosts is because they follow after my lead. Which, so they actually believe in it. They actually know about Jesus' son that sadly did not make it into the real world. Right. Well now, ladies and gentlemen, you, you can understand now why I wanted Grace Rose to come on the show and speak to us all from her perspective about what life is all about and the positive and negative energies and I hope you will have gained something from it certainly we have gained immeasurably from her presence in our lives so we hope it will some help to you and uh, we want to give Grace Rose the opportunity to to bring our conversation to a close today maybe by asking her do you have anything that you could say to people that might help them with their struggles because as you know many people are struggling in the world today they're struggling with their belief systems they're struggling with perhaps not enough money i actually probably have four things to say okay sure i'm so sorry to cut you off but go ahead i I want to hear never be afraid to die 
even if they tell you you're on the end of dying, don't believe it. Because sometimes if you don't believe it, you might actually live in an extra day. And when you have not died by then, live every moment of your life. And also, when you actually collect the, the energy, actually send it to them. Because that's the easiest way to tell by it. And make sure you put it in a bottle that's kind of like this. But also, be brave, be strong, and never say no. Always say yes. But never give up on whatever. And always think of yourself. Always imagine. Like, let's say if you want a house. And let's say if you really want it, imagine yourself in there and it might happen. But if God knows the right, then he would not get the house because um, he knows that that's not your happy place, if that is so. Okay. But if you're on the end dying, again, I'm going to say this again, always have hope that you're going to live another day. And never say die, never say death. Unless if you mean it in the matter of what I'm speaking of to this day right now. Okay. Wow, what a profound note to finish on. So we're delighted to have been able to bring Grace Rose into our studio today and to talk about these things. And uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with us, the contact details will be below this video, but also you'll find it on our website at worldofempowerment.com. Thank you for being with us and thank you, Grace Rose, for blessing us with your incredible insights into the lives we live here on planet Earth at this You're time. You're welcome. You have been listening to Angel Rose and Ahanu on World of Empowerment Radio, your station for practical spirituality in a changing world.